know, Mary, you know. Ooh. It's winter, isn't it? I know, and it's time for us to do another show. And I think because the weather's not the best, we're just going to go inside and do another kitchen edition. I think so, because yeah. the roads are kind of icy, and it's a little bit blistery out. Yeah, so we'll just do kitchen. Okay. So, come on in. Okay, stand like a duck. You're supposed to stand, stand, stand like a duck. What? what are we on now? Whoa, this is, oh, this is just like last week. Oh my goodness. This was like my driveway when we had that ice come through. But it looks a little more serious. I think we're on an ice floe Oh, Nancy. Nancy, what have you done? This has got to stop, Mary. What this have has you, got to what, stop. What have you done to us? This time. Me? <laughs> Not I, thought me. We, I thought we were going to be talking about recipes, and now we yeah. are sitting. I know. Oh, and I don't have gloves. I Well, look I at this. I, I don't know. Have I don't have my, my fingers are going to be frozen. Okay, listen. I'm going to call frozen. Franz, oh. my son, that's in the Air Force. Now, again. isn't he on leave for the holiday? No, no. Oh. He went right back to work. So, oh. yeah, we're going to get him in here. Franz, yeah. answer. Finish dialing. Finish dialing. Oh, I got, yeah. Okay. okay. There we go. Get him okay. going. All right. This is his secret number, so I ought to be able to get him. Because he's in the Air Force and he does secret things. Oh, yeah. Franz? Yes, this is your mother. And Mary and I have had another one of those little, I don't know what you would call it. We go through a, some kind of a space warp. We are on a glacier or ice floe or something. <laughs> on an ice Your flow. mother did something with the microwave <laughs> and the coffee again. I don't think it was me. It was. Oh, he wants to know if we've been wearing our tin hats and our colanders. Well, I've been using aluminum foil. <laughs> do I need <laughs> tin foil instead? <laughs> okay. No, I do not run around in a colander. You think I would walk in the quick trip wearing a colander? Well, you know, with the storms <laughs> coming through, right. Nancy, this could be your backyard. I know. For all we but know. we can't stay here, friends. We're on an ice floe. And we don't have clothes. I don't There's have no gloves. Thing. Mary doesn't have gloves. This is bad. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. I know you're busy, but. Oh. All right. Well, we'll try that. All right. Thanks. <sighs> He's Nancy, busy. I'm dizzy. But, but I, listen, I think no. I'm having hypothermia. <laughs> Nancy, okay. Uh, oh. Listen, he gave me, it's like a 911 number for this outfit that's called, um, it's for people that are spatially discombobulated. That's us, right? Oh. And they're supposed to help us. Okay. So I I'm going to dial this. Okay. Secret code. Yeah. Yes, 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 Coach yes. Jackets. Thank you. Yeah, we are we are spatially discombobulated. Uh-huh. And we need help because we are in a bad situation here. We're on an ice floe. Oh, and it's cold. And this is not normal. For I us. have on tennis <laughs> shoes. This is not good. We got to get out of here. So you're supposed to be able to help us. Oh. What? Oh, come on. Now, this is ridiculous. You know, they want me to make a password, a 16-letter password. Uh, with special numbers and characters? And yes. Oh, and no. then, oh, no. and now what else? Oh, yeah. How old was my mother when she went to school? You know, these, these password-type questions. We need to get out of here. I don't have time we to need, do this. We need to go right now because I am going numb. <laughs> I'm going to pretty soon start talking <laughs> words and backwardsness. I'm not this making not, any no. sense. Okay. I'm going hypothermic. I can't, we can't wait for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, bye. I can't do that. I'm calling Franz back. This is ridiculous. Oh, sorry, you Nancy, for I Pete's am. sake. Franz, is, we're, we're just not going to call him anymore if he can't help us right no. away. Franz, this National is your mother. Security. Yeah, and that number you gave us, that was ridiculous. We can't do that. We're on an ice floe, Franz, and not only that, I'm afraid, you know what hangs out on ice floes? Polar bears. Now, if you want Mary and I to be recycled food, a polar bear. No, no. no we, we are not recycled that. feed. We are not recycled feed. You get those Air Force guys to get out here and get his 
us off of here. Don't they have a base like close to here somewhere? <laughs> oh. Listen to your mother. Bases everywhere. Yeah. You get that. You get something over here right now. Do you hear me? Right now. Okay. All right. Now this oh, is Nancy. insane. Aren't you? Aren't you well, just? Aren't you just for 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 reason? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I gotta. Go oh, oh, oh! Wait. I think I hear. I think I hear a helicopter. Wait, here wait. we are. Here we are. <laughs> Down here. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, boy, I hope the neighbors don't see that black helicopter flying off. No kidding. Oh, my gosh. In Irvin's Cooley from the I remote studio. I know it. All right, I'm, I'm so glad we're off the ice flow. That was not good. No, no. That was even colder than it is here. I know, and isn't that amazing? All right, we're going to go inside, we're going to settle down, and we're going to do a kitchen edition of the History, History Files. Files. This is kind of what we wanted to do in the beginning anyway, wasn't it? Well, that's how this was supposed to start <laughs> out. Get the studio equipment, bring it to the remote studio. But of course, Nancy, with you, there's always a me? grand adventure. <laughs> Don't blame it all on me. Oh, come me. on. It's got something to do with the U.S. Air Force. I know it does. Yeah, but you've got that mag, you got all that magnetism, I think, going on. I do not have magnets in my head. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, but you're implying that I have some kind of magnetic force, and I probably wouldn't if it wasn't for the ancient aliens. Well, you know, Mary, I thought today, and I'm, you got to excuse me just for one minute because I forgot to get my book out Oh, here. Nancy's got a book. Ugh. Nancy's got a book. Ugh. Now, what is our book about? It is a cookbook. Another cookbook but with But I Nancy. got this one back in uh, the 1980s. Oh. And what it was. Oh, there we go. Climb under the wire. Yeah. Don't. Take the computer off the table, Nancy, for okay. Pete's sake. Treachery. I got this cookbook in the 1980s, and it's Recipes of the Great Depression. Oh, okay. And this lady, Rita Van Amber, she had gone and collected all these recipes from people that they remembered from the, uh, from the Depression. When no one had any money, right. nobody had food, they had soup lines. During the yeah. Depression. Yeah, and they had great, they just had some great recipes in here of things that were, you know, really basic. And that's what they, if you didn't have any money, that's what you ate. You ate everything on the animal. Yes. You ate everything on your plate, too. Yes, <laughs> yes. And there was no fast food. No. Fast food tip, typically took a couple days, and you probably missed a couple meals in between. So what, she wrote this really nice thing in here called Mother's Apron. Oh, this is going to be sad. <laughs> no, Everybody's going to be no. crying. No, it's but, not. But April, aprons, excuse me, aprons were very important in the day. And Yeah, and that's, this is what she said. I'm going to read it because it's very well written. It said, do you remember Mother's Aprons? Always big. They were, and their uses myriad. Beside, the foremost purpose, the protection of the dress underneath. Yes, because you didn't wash yeah. clothes every day. Right, and it was a holder for removing pots and pans from the oven, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was wonderful for drying children's tears. Oh, I bet, yes. And yes, even for wiping small noses and shooing <laughs> flies, right? <laughs> well, it's all-purpose wear. It was, and it said, from the hen house... It carried eggs. Oh, in the pockets. Fuzzy chicks. Okay. Ducklings or goslings. Okay. And sometimes half hashed eggs to be finished in the warming oven. Oh. Yeah. And its folds provided an ideal hiding place for shy children. Oh, I bet. And when guests lingered on chilly days, this is what I remember, the apron was wrapped around their arms. Remember oh, that? Oh, yes. <laughs> To keep their hands warm. Yes. And innumerable times it wiped the perspiring brow bent over a hot wood-burning stove. 
chips and kindling came to the kitchen stove in yep, like that a, basket. Yep. And as did fresh peas and, and green beans yep. from the garden. <laughs> Often they were potted and stemmed in the lap of that you know, well, why apron. dirty a bowl when you've got right. an apron that's got, it's your container. Windfall apple, apples, kindling chips, and corn cobs were gathered in it, and wildflowers. So oh, everything. Everything. Yeah. And probably an occasional infant. Yeah, yeah. And as the chairs were hastily dusted with its corners <laughs> when uh, unexpected company was, expect, was you know, sighted. And waving it aloft was as good as a dinner bell to call the men in from the field. That makes perfect sense. Big they were, yes, and useful. Now I'm wondering, will any modern frilled plastic apron provide such nostalgic memories? No, they would not. Because we don't wear <laughs> aprons anymore. And now, I mean, this was this picture I've got up here right now. This was probably from the fifties, and already they were changing, you know, shape. Oh yes, they yeah. weren't the ones that were over the shoulder. Right, right. Like the one that the brunette is in at the top. Yeah. You know, that was more. That's more of what I remember, but the shoulders were narrower. And I remember my mother wearing the kind that's more like just. The waist? The waist, yeah. But it made sense back then when people did not wash their clothes after wearing them once. Well, right, right. Yeah, it was just, you didn't do that. Well, the women had to do the wash, and the wash was done typically by hand and that with primitive machines. Yeah. And then you had to do the ironing. So this is a picture of my great-grandmother, and what is she wearing? She is wearing the <laughs> real apron. The big apron, the multi-purpose apron. And I, I always remember her wearing one of those. Here's another one of those big multi-task aprons. Well, and you can see how big the pockets are. Yeah. And the pockets were very, very important. And I know I find this with, like, my jackets. Yeah. I like pockets. I'm a pocket person. I do, too. And what makes me mad is because women's... Trousers and pants never have really good pockets. No, no. And no. typically they are an inch shorter than the men's pockets, you can't especially get in jeans. Anything into them. No, no. no. It's just really frustrating. We want fair we pocketry. Want pockets. We want yeah. pockets, big pockets. Here's another. This is a picture of my grandmother and my mother. And <laughs> you can see here, Granny has on one of those big Aprons. Very big apron. Yeah. She and there's the that baby that yep. we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another one. This one has the straps. but uh, This one's a little bit fancier, though, well, because it's it pleated at the waist. Yeah. yeah. And it's got nice pockets on the side. And I often wonder, because I remember my grandmother, and one pocket was square, and one pocket was rounded. The pockets hmm. didn't match. I wonder why. And that's and if you look at this picture close, yeah. this one looks rounded and this one looks square. Well, that could be. I I don't know. Maybe someone that's watching this will <laughs> fill us in. Tell us what the deal is. Okay. Now this one was more like I think you're thinking of Laura Ingalls Wilder yes. or something. Yes. Yes. The girl with the lovely little apron in it. Everything. Right, and that apron almost looks too small for her, but she's holding her dress up. Oh, right, yeah. So I don't know if that was some. I sure she wouldn't be wearing that if she was plucking chickens anyway. Probably not. <laughs> this looks like going to church or going to a social or yeah, so coming up to the ridge and going to the temperance hall. <laughs> serving a pie after, you know, church. So. Yes, there you go. Yeah, but it is cute. Now, these are my three great aunts. And uh, you'll notice that my great aunt Ruth Dock in here, hers was still the over the you know shoulders, not quite as all encompassing as some of the early ones. No, nope, not as long no. in that one because of the pattern. It's hard to see if, what the pockets look right. like. And as I recall, she usually had scissors and uh, thread oh, and needles. Did she do a lot of seamstressing? Yes, yes. And and the lady over here, her sister on the right. If she had that shawl off, 
you can see that she also had that kind of an apron. Now, is that a shawl or is that a Native American blanket? No, <laughs> I think it's the it's just a just shawl. shawl. Yeah. Well, you know, it's pretty and it's yeah. a print, and it's... it was a kind of a cold day. I think they were cold there. If we have a picture. So now we're we're thinking about this is a real early type kitchen. That looks just like my kitchen. It does. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the only thing that's missing is the border collie. And uh, you probably don't have the bucket here for water. No, we don't have a bucket for water. But, you know, when we were having those kind of scary snowstorms, yeah, um, we did bring in a five-gallon bucket and fill it with water just in case. we gotta, we got to be prepared. Just in case. Oh, I know. And I just noticed that they also have, on the stove here, they have one of those irons. Oh, yep, they're heating up the iron. Yep. Somebody's finishing up with wash. Yep, yep. that's, uh, that, those things were heavy. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, and those stoves are heavy, too. Yeah. Well, anything like that, cast iron. It yeah. Was just, it was meant to last. Here's another over the, you know, big with functional the, apron. With the, I guess we'd call them t-shirt. T-shirt straps or yeah, yeah. sun shirts? Or I they guess so. Those summertime t-shirts? Yep. Very functional, you know. If people stop washing their clothes all the time, they might want to go back to this. <laughs> well, right. Why not get an apron? <laughs> and this lady is actually a teacher. And uh, this is a school that's up in Chimney Rock. And this was what she was wearing as she was teaching. So that was... Well, she could have folk. used it to help on the on the erase board sure. or, you know, like you said, when a kid is crying, you wipe the tears, oh, you know. If it was a nasty little boy, she could have... She could have tied him up with it. <laughs> she could have flipped him and hit him like... Oh, that's right. Snapped him. <laughs> <laughs> Twirled it up and snapped. And whacked him, yeah. And then he would have to go home and tell his folks, and then he'd probably have to clean the barn or something. Yeah, or he'd get snapped a few times, too. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And this lady, too, this looks like a, one of those big aprons that really got used, but that looks like it's got a pocket there anyway. Yes, it does. Yeah. And I just remember my great-grandma, she put that apron on when she got dressed in the morning, mm -hmm. and it didn't come off until night. Yeah, yeah. It until just, after the dishes were done in yeah. the evening. It was just on all day. Now, what are they doing here, Mary? They are milking cows yep. by hand. Yep. And I, we can't see if she's got an apron or not. But, but she's got straps. Yep, so, so she probably does. Yes. Yep. And she probably had an apron just for chores. Yeah. Yeah, and I love this stool that she's sitting on. Yep, yeah, that's a that's a single post stool. Boy, you gotta be. <laughs> you gotta balance. You gotta balance for that, don't you? <laughs> and you hope that that heifer's not gonna kick you, because you're gonna go flying. <laughs> I liked that picture though. And there's this some more. These are more paper. modern day. They are, and you can see that they've got these pretty little brackets here in the form of birds. You know, that's oh pretty. yeah. Pretty nifty, really. I bet in the old days they just had, you know, like pole shed nail or, a, you know. Yeah. They probably didn't have fancy birds with no. sitting on tree branches and hooks. They probably didn't have very much at all, really. <laughs> Here's Ooh. a fancy one. I'm thinking this is like from the 60s or yes. something. Yes, this one's got a little bit of bling to it. Yeah. But see, there's that there's round. There's that pocket. There's that rounded I pocket. Know it. And that's a deep pocket. Yeah. That's so that one must have been designed by a woman. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> nice deep pocket. That's we what you the I know it. But I can remember, you know, people wearing these really big aprons. And just like they said in that book, how using it for a hot pad or a towel. Oh, or, right. Yeah, for everything. They were just multi-purpose. Now, by this time, this would be all oh, around 1920, the... the Fashions were really changing. Oh, right, right. Yeah. They got much shorter, and uh, during uh, World War One and earlier, they had these skirts. They called them hobble skirts. They were real tight around their ankles. They couldn't hardly even walk. I know. They, yeah. they, they almost had to kind of wiggle. Did yeah. they when they walked? It was ridiculous. So they looked like weeblos. A lot more practical when they finally <laughs> got the dresses, um, you know, a little shorter and uh, a little, little more shorter. comfortable. Yes. Now, here's a kitchen. I think this is right 1950s. Yes. Yeah. And I don't ever remember seeing one in pink like this. 
I remember a lot of the greens I, or and that, blues. Yeah. Or the like gray. A, yes. I still remember seeing a lot of gray. The linoleum might be gray. Uh, the See, tables. but here's green linoleum. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. Isn't and it? the electric coffee pot that right. would percolate. The electric percolator. And uh, it's just, you know, kitchens really change. What a, what a switch from that other one that was pretty primitive. Well, in this one, I bet while she was in her apron, it probably didn't get as dirty because she didn't have a wood stove. Right. You know, she wasn't living in, I mean, everything here is kind of like you take a washcloth, you wipe it down, yeah. spit, spot, you know, everything's clean and tidy. Yeah, and that's, you know, it was like in the 40s and 50s when they really got that germ theory down and they started keeping things really clean. Right. Yeah. And that was why these kitchens, you know, and that's true. Wood stoves are wonderful, but they are kind of messy. I have a wood stove yeah. and it's very messy. They just are. I don't know any way you can, you know, deal with it unless you put it out in the yard and cook there. Well, you'd have to vacuum your, <laughs> you'd have to, va you'd have to vacuum off your wood before you brought it in to burn it in the stove. It's because that's where most of it comes yeah. from. And ash, you know, when you're taking the ashes out, it's just that's what happens. Now, I don't know if, if you ever hung around your kitchen like this with uh, your spike heels. Oh, yes, Nancy. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you put somebody else's head on, on me. On your body there. It would yeah. be very embarrassing. <laughs> but look at how neat and tidy her eggs are in the door. Yeah. I, my grandma had a refrigerator like that. Yeah, and my parents did too. And it just had the little box up above your yeah. little freezer box, and you had to unthaw it. You know, yes. I had a. Turn Chip off, off the ice. Oh boy, that was fun. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. But uh, still, I mean, look how well organized this is. And they've got food. They have got a giant ham in there. Oh, it must be ready for the <laughs> holidays because they've got the holiday cake. Yeah. And she's obviously dressed to the tee. Well, it's probably because husband is coming home. And she's oh, home yes. Ready. <laughs> and the children have been tended to and are quietly playing in their rooms. Yeah. She's going to serve the perfect supper. <laughs> yes, and meet him at the door with a cocktail. That is in a Betty Crocker cookbook. <laughs> things, the way it was. things you need to do to prepare for when your husband gets home from work. Isn't now, that crazy? Yeah. Now this one is pretty neat. It is a uh, invitation to a wedding, and this was in 1921 in Independence, and it was Miss Rose Smea. And she was marrying August Weir. And uh, there is a Weir building. Yes. Yeah, it's just, I think it's one building down from the East End in Independence. And uh, this was their uh, wedding announcement, which I thought was really was pretty. Yes. And then here's their wedding picture. Oh, that is so yeah. cool. And there is not any aprons to be found nope, here. No, nope, no, nope. And they look real modern. This was 1921. But the sad thing was that he had been in World War I and he had gotten exposed to the mustard, you know, the gas, the uh -huh. poison gas. They had two children and then he died less than, you know, he died in 1927. Oh, wow. Young so, man. Yeah, because that gas, even if you were exposed to it, and maybe it didn't bother you much right off the bat, but it just kind of rotted your lungs over the slowly, years. Slowly ate him yeah, away. Yeah, it was really sad. And a lot of people remember Rose Smea, and she never married again. Huh. Yeah. So uh, I just thought that was, they looked real hopeful here anyway. But yes. At least they had some time together. Now, remember we've talked about how they used to move houses around? Yes. Here's a picture. <laughs> now, I don't know whose house this is. But they are moving a house. And they've got a team, they've one, got, two. Yeah, we can't see them all. There's there's like three horses, probably at least six horses there, maybe more that we can't see. Yeah. And they've got some axles or wagons or something on, on the yep, house. Yeah, underneath it. And it's getting moved to somewhere else. There you go, recycling buildings. We yeah. should learn from that, Nancy. Really? Yeah, we should. Let's now we just let our buildings rot and fall down. But it's more complicated now because we've got power lines. And those are expensive to move. Right. Plus you have to get permits. Oh yeah. There's you know, that's expensive too. And insurance. <laughs> and that's expensive too. 
Boy, Nancy's just spending money left and right here. <laughs> Holy this whole, cow. This whole house that, you know, like they set it down and it uh, falls apart or something. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. about my luck. <laughs> but that's what they did. Now, do you remember this building? It was in Independence and it was called Polly's Bar for a while and then it was called Nibby's. And I'm not sure what the date is on this. It might be the 60s. And it said the building... Uh, was demolished and I'm just wondering where this was. Do you have any idea? Is this maybe the East End Bar over here on uh, the left? Hmm. Nibby's Bar. Is anybody no, remember to me, that? to me this looks like the hotel. The old oh, hotel. Okay. And this would have eventually oh, okay. become Fila's store. Okay. Recently called Nibby's, but yeah. that's not that doesn't that ring a sense. bell either. That makes sense that that would have been the hotel to the left. But I'm sure there's people watching this that know exactly where Nibby's was. Right. Yeah. I just recognize those windows. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it, I mean, by all means, give us some feedback. Let and, us know where yeah. Nibby's bar was. <laughs> Tell us what's right or what's wrong. Now look at this building. It looks like a wedding cake, doesn't it? Over it, there on the right. It does. That where is that? Nancy? That was in Arcadia in eighteen seventy five. Wow. And that was right when the train had first come through. Okay. And Arcadia was you know, they were starting out down next to the tracks in the D swamp. <laughs> down next to the river. And this uh building, this was going to be the uh Mineral Springs Hotel. Oh. And at one time, apparently, there had been a lake down there. Uh, well, they called it a lake, maybe more like a pond. Like a mill pond? Right. And it, they were advertising it as having, you know, healthful mineral water. Oh, okay. Because that was the real in thing back then in the 1870s was going to these... Hot springs. springs. Springs where you drank the mineral water and, you know, it was supposed to be really healthy. And well, it was cleaner than the water in town because most towns didn't have decent water. Well, they certainly didn't have municipal water, I don't no, think. No, no. Now, this was a fantastic building. However, there was a problem. Number one, of course, what do you think it was built out of? Wood. And what is it right next to? A train track. And what did, you know, those old puffers? They burned coal. And wood, and what came out all the time? Uh, all kinds of ash, and some of it's hot. Cinders and things, and so not too long after this building was built, it burned. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. But that was at the Mineral Springs, and... Uh, oh, and hot chicken and fish shop. Yeah, all kinds of beer, and they had... <laughs> <laughs> Government tested spring water. Wow. A fine drive, bring the whole family. Yes. Yeah, and now um, I have been told that there were two mineral springs besides the one we just saw with the building that burned down, that this was maybe a later one, and uh, it's not there anymore. Anyway, people don't remember very much about it. But that was the idea, was there? That is amazing. Have a mineral spring where you would hang out and drink all this really healthy water. And get rejuvenated. Right, right. <laughs> Probably. Good idea. All right, there's the old uh, school. This one was on Oak Ridge in oh, the town of Arcadia. Okay. And it was a beautiful school. Look at it. It was very modern. My goodness, it's all made out of brick. And when, what circle, when is this? I think this was built, oh, it must have been around 1905 or so. So Arcadia really had all kinds of cool stuff going on in the day. Yeah, and, and this school went on and I think it was closed in the 1950s or maybe early 1960s. It's not there today. There's no trace of it. Oh. It was totally torn down. And there's some kind of story behind that, but I never did find that out. Okay. But if you drive up Oak, uh, Oak Ridge now... And there just there aren't that many houses up no, there. No. But at that time, they had enough kids there to have a big school. A big school, and it was a beautiful school. Look at that. Yeah, isn't that a shame that it's it is gone dancing down? Yeah. and gone. You know, like Open Pigeon, they converted some of the old brick schools 
into houses. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy who did like four or five of them in the area. One at Bruce Valley. That was a school that they yeah. turned into a right. home. Yeah, it's still there. And it, and like I say, I don't know why this one was torn down, but I just heard that there was a story behind oh, it. Oh, I'm sure it's a land dispute. Yeah, somebody wasn't happy. That's so right. <laughs> there's nothing left of it anymore. And this barn, this isn't a very good picture because it's out of an old newspaper, but this is a barn that was down in near Dodge. Okay. And it was, guess what they did there? What, moonshine? Yes. <gasps> they weren't milking cows. <laughs> <laughs> the cows were just the front. Right. And right. in the lean-to, they probably had their still and all their liquor works. I guess it was quite an operation anyway, but... You know, if you were just driving by, you just saw this barn. But they said that everybody knew what was going on there, you know. Well, but it was hard to get down into that neighborhood so they could get away with a lot more than everybody else. This was the Coast to Coast store in Galesville. It's still there. Okay. And I was a child growing up in the 50s, 60s. That was the Coast to Coast store. And then upstairs there was a dental office. Okay. And I, I think also the switchboard up there when they had that for you know the telephones where you plug in yep. different people's move, numbers. Move the wires. Yep. I thought that was fascinating if I ever got to see that. That lady working in front of that switchboard, just pulling <laughs> things out and plugging them in. It was amazing. So uh, it did kind of sit empty for a while, but now it is being uh, used. There's there's new businesses in there. Okay. Yeah. Because it was a nice, big, solid building. Right, right. And uh, it was just kind of a shame. But, you know, I think, when I look at these cars here, I think this has got to probably be from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's when they had the really big cars. <laughs> big floaters. <laughs> yep, they were big cars. And here's what you used in the winter. Uh, this was 1918, and this was down in Tremplo. And this was, at that time... Trumplow had its own little newspaper. It was called the Trumplow Herald. And parked outside here is, remember that song, Jingle Bells, about yes. the one horse open sleigh? That's, yes. <laughs> that's what it is. And, you know, it's snowy out there right now. But that's what people did in the winter, especially if you were uh, a young guy that wanted to really impress the girls. Well, because most of them would get to stay over in the bundling blanket. Oh boy, I don't know. Because they weren't <laughs> sent home, so they'd stitch them into a bundling blanket. It's hard. Do you know what those are? I know, but I just had a hard time thinking those things would really work. Well, all <laughs> depends know. on if they made them sleep in the parlor behind the doors or not. <laughs> Well, let's just take them out of the bundling and put them in the sleigh and imagine <laughs> and all the fun they had behind a really fast horse because those sleighs were very light and they were kind of close to the ground and right. so they really got going. But you had to be careful because they were liable to flip too. Oh, yeah. So I'm you sure. had to know what you were doing. Or you could run into the back of the horse or there's all kinds of things that can go wrong with yeah, a one-horse yeah. open sleigh. But that was the thing to have and... If you had a real fast trotting horse, boy, you, you were going to be a, a hot guy with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you didn't eat too much snow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that could be. This was a card I found. This is from the uh, First World War, and they want to know what you can do to help you know, your country. For home and country. It says, we can help the farmers with their crops. And I just wonder how many people went out to farms and volunteered to help <laughs> Well, they probably did so that they could get a meal, Nancy. <laughs> I think they still had food then, but, I mean, you look at it, how many people that didn't know anything about farming would come out to a farm and be prepared to, to work like this? Well, but they all knew pretty, pretty good how to work, right? I, I hope so. Most of them came from farms in that time period. Look at, I mean, they're making haystacks, I believe. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're... Pitching all that onto a wagon and bringing it in, and when you run out of room in the barn, you put it in the stacks. That's right. That's right. And there's the windmill. Of so course. If there's anybody, always a windmill. If anybody watched our program round and round, we had a good look at windmills, didn't we? We did. We did, and it was fascinating. So I just always wondered how many people actually went out and did this. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
a nice idea. Raise yeah. your hand if you ever yeah. help neighbors with crops. I know I did. And then this is our last picture today. Isn't this lovely? I took this about two weeks ago. Yes, the beautiful snow in the barn in the background. Yeah, and this was uh, the Gary Everson farm. And a lot of people remember Gary Everson, my dear, dear neighbor, who yes. everybody still misses. If you knew him, you'd miss him. But what that's like your arch typical farm. Wisconsin farm in the winter. Isn't that's it? right. Yeah. It's beautiful setting. Well, I think that's going to just about take care of our Oh, one more quick one. One more quick one. This lonely little house. When I was working for uh, NRCS and I had to go up and check on CRP. And I think I probably had to go to that field up there on the left. Okay. And there was this little house up there. This was up above Travers Valley. And I imagine at one time there were other buildings there too. Right. But it just looks so lonely. <laughs> I know. Out there all by itself. <laughs> I know. It's just that little house. And uh, the covering was that tar paper that made it look like bricks. Yep. Yeah. It's probably not even there anymore. Someone's home. Go press that button. Press the button. Yeah. See, she's getting pushy. I am. I'm very pushy here. There we go. There we go. The technology. Oh, we didn't have a kitchen timer. We used the oven timer yeah. today. Oh, here's one. This is one I think that maybe we should do this for our next Name That Road. I'm, no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, I can appreciate the burrows carrying the loads. We don't have to use burrows. We'll drive. Well, it's not wide enough to drive, Nancy. You know, they always oh. want us to challenge us. Here we go. We've got some challenges coming, and you folks will never guess what we're going to get up to in 2023. I think this is Buffalo County. I definitely think that's Buffalo County. <laughs> I think it's County. a Dugway. I think it is. It's a scary Dugway. You wouldn't catch me on it, burrow or no burrow. Well, anyway, we want to thank everybody that showed up today, and uh, we had some adventures again today, didn't we? I know. We? Always an adventure. And I refuse to wear a colander on my head. I'm not. I'm going to... Uh, aluminum foil is out the door. Tin foil's <laughs> coming in. And, and again, I just want to say that if you ever see a copy of this book, it's really great. It's the uh, recipes of the Great Depression. And it, it's just fun to read. It's just some really fun reading. So. And maybe we'll go through a few recipes yeah. later on. No, we'll... If it's winter and it's still cold and we don't feel like being road warriors, <laughs> we'll come do another kitchen session and we'll talk about some of those recipes from the 30s when you had a made do, right? There you go. Okay. And thank you so much for joining us on The History, History Files. And I bet by having this program, we're going to suddenly see a resurgence in people wearing aprons. Aprons. <laughs> Spruce yourself up. You bet. <laughs>